Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Josef and today we will have a look at flow through water turbine. This is not just a random turbine, but the very famous Francis turbine. The agenda for today looks as follows. I will again show you what you are going to learn, what steps in the simulation process are involved and how we can split up the simulation steps. And that's what we're actually going to do inside of the tutorial. And at the end, as always, we will go step by step through the tutorial how you can set up this simulation. So what are you going to learn? I will show you how you can set up a turbine simulation in this case for a Francis turbine, we will make use of the so-called incompressible flow module inside of SimScale. I will show you how you can assign boundary conditions to this specific type of simulations, and we will also make use of the rotating zones. I will show you how you can properly mesh this kind of geometry, and at the end, in the post-processing step, I will show you how you can generate particle traces. The underlying equation again for solving these kind of problems is the so-called Navier-Stokes equation. That's the Navier-Stokes equation in its most general form. It's nothing else than Newton's second law of motion. So in this case, we break this down very simple and that's how we're actually going to approach the simulation problem. We first have a pre-processing step, a processing step, as well as a post-processing step. In the pre-processing step, we make sure that our CAD geometry is suitable for our simulation purposes. In the processing step, we set up the numerical solvers, the boundary conditions and so on. And in the post-processing step, we are trying to make sense out of the data that has been generated. If you have any questions regarding the slides or the tutorial in general, feel free to reach out to us via the forum and I will put a link to a dedicated section for this specific tutorial right under the video. So feel free to reach out to us. With that being said, let's jump straight into the workbench and I'll show you how you can set up this wonderful simulation of a Francis turbine. Let's go. Hey and welcome to the workbench. So as you can see, this here is the Francis turbine. It is actually already prepared for us, but there are some intricacies which I'll explain in a few more minutes. So this is our turbine. So what we want to do is we want to take this Francis turbine and use it for our simulation, which we will now do by clicking on create simulation. We choose the incompressible flow module as explained earlier on. We click on create simulation. And what we want to do is that water flows through our region. For that reason, we choose material, water and apply it. Simple as that. Then we pick our region and save this. So one intricacy which I wanted to discuss with you is the following. So if I select this face, as you can see right now, let's just go uh, to boundary conditions, create one randomly. And what you can see is I choose the boundary here. There is a small circle here, right here, which is also blue. That means that there is an overlap or an intersection. The yellow zone is our multi-reference trim, so MRF zone. If I select it, you can see it's selected right here. So I can either hide it or select it. This is the cylinder, but there is an overlap. So if this yellow cylinder turns, the outer wall will also somehow turn, but it shouldn't be spinning, right? What you can do therefore is to create a rotating wall boundary condition for this phase and we will set this velocity to zero and this will actually prevent the intersecting circle which you can see from spinning. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any more questions regarding that you can ask in the forum or check out the documentation page. It's explained there in a bit more detail. So, so we have the velocity inlet boundary condition already defined right here. We select the velocity inlet phase and we say we want to have a flow rate, but volumetric flow defined, which is 16 cubic meter per second. So it's defined and I click on save. Perfect. The next thing I want to do is that we want to do a pressure outlet right here. So we go to pressure outlet, define that phase and we're happy with the settings. Perfect. And it's actually a common combination to have a velocity inlet and pressure outlet. What we want to do next is to define the rotating wall. So I explained earlier on that we want to have a rotating wall here, but with a zero velocity. And we want to create a rotating wall boundary condition for this phase. So we close this, select the phase, create a wall boundary condition and select rotating wall. The points here will remain zero and I'll just change the axis to zero and one right here and the velocity will be kept at zero. The rest is fine and I click on save. What I do now is to select the other walls. So what I do now is to hide the rotating zone. I select the phases that have already been predefined as boundary conditions. I invert the selection and I create. What I can do is to create a topological entity set, for example. What I can do, let's just do it. We say no slip walls. 
perfect. And what I do now is to create another wall boundary condition, which is no slip, and we apply a wall function to it. And now I select the no slip walls. Perfect. So I'm basically done with the boundary conditions in that sense right here. What we want to do now is to add or go to advanced concepts and assign the MRF zone. So we have a look at steady state phenomena. So MRF is the right approach. I type in the parameters, which you can also find in the documentation entry. Perfect. And the axis should be changed to minus one. And we have zero right here. And the rotational velocity is 36.65. And what I choose is the MRF rotating zone. Perfect, I'm good to go, I can save it. So usually what you know from other tutorials is that we usually skip numerics, but for this particular tutorial, we want to go to non-orthogonal correctors and adapt it to two in order to stabilize the run. Once I'm done, I click save and jump to simulation control. So what I want to have is 600 right here, and it's actually 600 iterations because we have a look at steady state. So that's what it actually means. And right in the world 600, that means we have a look at the end state, at the steady state. Perfect. What I can do then is to change this to 30,000, for example. What I can do as well to stabilize the run is to use potential foam initialization by activating this. I'm basically good to go. What I have to do next, of course, is to define some result control items. You might know this from other tutorials. So I go to result control, add forces and moments, and go here. Then I select my MRF rotating zone and I type in the parameters which I've already done in the previous step. So you can find these parameters again in the documentation. And I want to write them out every five time step, let's say. And I choose the runner blades in this case, which are of interest for me. What I do next is to have some surface data, which is in this case an area average. I want to write it out every five time steps for the inlet as well as the outlet. So we do the same for the outlet, as you can see right here, every five time steps. Perfect. So what we do now is to move on to the mesh. So we go to the meshing tree item. And what you can see is I've already defined the mesh, of course, as you can see right here. If you want, you can also use the clip filter to see how beautiful your mesh actually is. And you can see the boundary layers have been defined right here. And as for the settings, it's very straightforward. I want to deactivate automatic boundary layers. I keep the finest at five and I increase actually the number of processors. Actually, you don't need that much. You can go to 32, but if you don't have a professional plan, it will be set to automatic anyway. And for 64 cores, it took me 27 minutes. And please keep in mind that more cores actually don't mean faster because there are some processes going on behind the scenes to actually distribute the work and so on. But that's another topic. Perfect. So what I've done is I defined a local element size for the detailed blades, as you can see. The maximum edge length has been set to 0.01 and I've selected the detailed blades, which has already been predefined right here, as you can see. I do the same for the guide vanes in runner parts, as you can see, with a maximum edge length of 0.025. And of course, I want to have inflate boundary layers with three layers and a growth rate of 1.3. So you choose everything except this region right here in the middle, inlet and outlet. And as you have seen in the result, the layers have been perfectly defined. What you can do in order to have a look inside of the mesh is of course to use the mesh clip filter, but I'll skip that for now. One last thing before you start the simulation or the meshing run. So we have chosen the cell zone or added the cell zone and have assigned the MRF rotating zone to it, which was already predefined when importing this model. Perfect. You can also have a look at the meshing log if you want or the mesh quality, which will open some kind of post processor. What we can do now basically is to hit the simulation run button and create a new simulation. But I have already prepared something. So this is run one and I can go to force plots, for example. And what I see is that there is some fluctuation at the beginning and then everything settles around the specific value. Great. Let me just open the run and then click on post process results. 
This will open the post processor. And as I promised you, I will now show you how you can add particle traces to your simulation. So I go to particle traces. What I have then have to do is I can adapt the map scaler. So maybe I want to have add the velocity, nodal velocity. Then I go to seeds, pick the point, the starting point, which is let's say right here. And you can see right now that it beautifully builds up all the streamlines. Of course, you can adapt the number of elements in each direction. So 10, 10 by 10 grid, which we have now, and the spacing between the streamlines. I hope this was useful to you. If you have any more questions, as I mentioned earlier on, feel free to reach out to me via email, via the forum, or put a comment down under the video. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next tutorial. <music>